Hi and welcome to the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast for athletes, coaches and professionals who want to achieve their goals faster. I'm David Charlton and I'll be sharing proven methods from leading athletes, coaches and experts that will help you get the most from your talent. Today's show is sponsored by Functional Intelligent Training, who are a sports injury clinic located in Gosforth, near Newcastle upon Tyne, and specialise in athlete development, nurturing future champions, strength and conditioning support, and excellent rehabilitation services. Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the important element of learning orientation that I discussed in the previous episode. Similarly, this is a short bite of mental toughness again, where I'll approach it from a very different angle to the last time. And the point of this episode is to look at some of the key features from episodes three and four, where Peter Ramage and Chris Paisley shared their experiences and some fantastic insights into elite sport. So one of the things Peter discussed was a big regret of his from his football career. When he played at Newcastle United, felt like he didn't do enough to earn a new contract. He got a little bit too comfortable. And I'm pretty sure Peter also talks about that was a pattern that followed him throughout his career until he was approaching his latter years of playing. Whereas Chris talks about having to be really honest with himself and accepting that he isn't perfect and that he can't play brilliant golf, whether that's swinging the golf club or striking the ball purely every time he plays in tournaments. And I'm pretty sure whether you're a footballer or a golfer or an athlete across any sport, you'll have come across these scenarios where you have got comfortable, you haven't been honest with yourself, you haven't challenged yourself for periods. You know, maybe your game has been in good nick for a period of time or you've been comfortable picking up your wages or a a decent salary. You haven't asked hard, difficult questions of yourself and perhaps your support team, your coaches around you, their focus has been taken up by other things in their life or in, in their coaching. So they haven't fully challenged you too. Or often, especially in team sports, or in the business world, because you're one of of many in a squad or team, you possibly haven't had close one-to-one conversations with some of your coaches or your manager. Therefore, you've gone through a period of time where you've just let things drift. When Chris talks about chasing perfection, I notice this is one of the biggest things that many athletes can get drawn into. And it goes on to cause frustration and a lot of self-criticism and severe problems with their confidence. People can get drawn into trying to execute certain skills. If it's the golfer trying to execute the drive in the perfect way with the perfect draw shape. Or it might be the footballer who's trying to cross the ball a certain way time and time again. And so much focus on executing the skills in a perfect way obviously it drives them on to practice but they don't evaluate the situation in the right way then it can cause more harm than good so based on peter's and chris's insights in this short episode i'm going to highlight some approaches that i like to use when i'm supporting my clients and you'll find details and handouts on my website under the show notes in the blog posts for this episode In Peter's case, when I'm working with a professional athlete over a long term, I like to sit down with them on a quarterly basis to help them take stock of where they currently are, where they want to get to and what they want to achieve and hugely importantly, how they're going to make it happen. Many people might be aware of performance profile and this is exactly what I'm talking about. As I mentioned earlier in the show notes on the website www.sport-excellence.co.uk you're going to find two blank copies of performance profile forms, ones for a footballer and ones for a golfer. Based on the fact Peter, a footballer, and Chris, a golfer, have been interviewed recently. Though that said, if you are an athlete who plays rugby or cricket or tennis or another sport, you'll be able to, to notice how the profile components have been laid out and then adapted for your sport and your particular needs. The idea of completing the performance profile is to help you plot your long-term objectives in five years time and then work out how you're going to achieve these goals and importantly drill down towards setting real short-term process goals that you're going to look to achieve on a daily weekly basis to give yourself the best chance of making your dreams become reality to help you make it happen and not just let it happen like lots of people do and generally my role in this process 
is to be a positive pain in the backside. It's to question you, to challenge your thinking. Why would I do that? Well, some people set their sights too low, tell themselves a story about where they are, where they're at, and what they actually can achieve. Whereas other people are really unrealistic and they're dreamers, if you like, in the way that they see themselves and others and forget to actually do the hard work or they get caught up in procrastinating. So why as an athlete should you waste a couple of hours of your time doing the performance profiling exercise, either by yourself or with an expert, a specialist like myself, a sports psychologist, when you could be playing on the Xbox or on the PlayStation? Well, it's pretty simple. Certainly in a team sport, it's unlikely that anyone from your club is going to give you the time and the service that we can provide you. It can be very difficult in a club or an academy setting because there's so many players for coaches and for specialists to support. They just simply don't have the time to give this exercise the respect that it deserves. Whereas for myself, I choose to work with a small amount of clients and give a top dollar service. In that time, I sit back, I listen to you, without forming any premeditated judgments on you. I've simply got your best interests at heart because I want you to achieve your goals and fast. And what you find from and what you find from performance profiling is that it is a highly motivational process. It makes you dream and then make plans to, to make those dreams happen. It can really get you pumped up, fired up and raring to go. You also learn a lot about where your strengths lie and where you're slightly weaker and what you need to improve upon, which is really, really helpful for any athlete because it makes you realize where you need to spend your time and really improves your decision-making and potentially the way you go about your practice or training. And now we'll move on to what Chris was talking about, playing golf or playing any sport when you're off color, when you're out of form. I'm pretty sure everybody who's listening to this never plays fantastically well all of the time. And if you do, I wanna know what your secret is. So I'd encourage any athlete to firstly have a think about the following questions. How often does your A game come out? And your B game, how often does the B game come out? Even go a little bit further and explore how often your C game comes out. In order to examine those questions, what you might wanna do is look at some statistics that you've kept or they might be online, or look at some scores or race times depending on which sport you play. From there, you'll be able to work out whether your A game comes out 40% of the time or whether it's near a 4% of the time. I think what you might well find is your B game and your C game are the most popular games that actually come out on a more regular basis. So your job will be to, to really look in detail at what actually is your A game, your B game, your C game, which components form those parts and then how can you ensure that those numbers start to change so your B game comes out slightly less and we see more of your A game likewise your C game comes out less and we see more of your B game that way you're only going to get better aren't you and the likelihood is doing this exercise you'll probably find out that you've got a Z game as well we've all got a Z game it's hard to admit it but it does come out every now and again. And for some people, it will come out more often than more often than they wish. So this next exercise is really, really important. And like the performance profiling exercise, there's a copy on the website for you to look at and work through. When you do it, what I'd suggest is though you chuck your ego to one side and you really admit and understand that you aren't perfect and you never will be perfect. It's gonna really help you get to grips with what exactly is your B game, what is your C game, what is your Z game, and of course, what is your A game. You're gonna be in a better place to make better decisions on the football pitch, on the golf course, on the rugby pitch, tennis courts, whatever your sport is. So what you'll need to do is, either after you've played a game, a match, or if you're fortunate enough to do it during a match, or during training even, you just need to write down three words. Did, thought, and felt. And then critique your performance. Critique different shots, passes, puts, serves that you've done. So maybe you're a golfer and you hooked it on a certain hole to the left, that's what you did. So what were you thinking about when you hit that shot? Were you thinking about the rubbish on the right hand side or the wind coming across from the right? What did you feel like? Did you feel tense? Did you quicken up? Were you indecisive? Maybe you're the footballer who just couldn't get past the fullback. Time and time again, he or she got the better of you. So what was your tendency? What did you do? Did you end up playing the easy ball regularly? Did you come inside? What were you thinking at the time? Were you thinking I'm rubbish? 
Oh, he's great. She's great. I'm never going to get past them. How did that make you feel? Did it knock your confidence? This exercise can be a simple 30 second exercise or you can take it up to 5-10 minutes and really go into fine details around your performance. I really would encourage it because it can improve your performance as no end. It's going to improve your self-awareness, no doubt about it. So then when you are in these positions, when your B game, your C game, your Z game shows up, you can do something about it. You can really improve. It's also worthwhile to do the exercise when you're playing really well too, so you understand what your thought processes are like at that time, what your feels are like, what it feels like when you are in the zone. And then when you compare and contrast the B game against the A game, the C game against the A game, you can again make some massive improvements. What have you got to lose? It's a win-win exercise ultimately. I hope you found these observations really helpful and that you go on to act on the exercises that I've talked about there because they really can take your performances up a notch or two or if you're a coach, a sports psychologist or a mind coach it can help your athletes and you go on to tune in to the next episode where I'm interviewing a very special guest a very very talented rugby player who's been capped more than 60 times for England I'd like to give a big thanks to today's sponsors Functional Intelligent Training, who are a sports injury clinic located in Gosford, near Newcastle upon Tyne, and specialise in athlete development, nurturing future champions, strength and conditioning support, and excellent rehabilitation services. Thank you for listening to Demystifying Mental Toughness today. To sign up for tips and advice to help you be the best that you can be, go to wwwsport excellence.co.uk and sign up to the Mental Edge newsletter.